RF killed the Wi-Fi star. Special event call sign exchange protocol. And adding parks, not call signs, to Hamalert. This time on Mailbag Monday. What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Today we have three glorious, wonderful questions submitted by you, the viewer. So let's go ahead and dive right in. This first question this guy's saying, Man, I got issues. Man, don't we all? Ain't nobody want to hear about your problems. <laughs> He says, every time I transmit on 20 to 160 meters, my internet goes out. I've had the internet people out there many times to look at the issue. They have no clue what's causing it. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, they even changed out the modem on the outside of the house. It's fiber optic. I'm only running 100 watts. I've tried lowering the wattage to 5 watts. It still does it. I spent hundreds of dollars on ferrite chokes using Messi and Poloni coax. 5% discount in the link below, uh, by the way, for Messi and Poloni. Um, Everything is grounded and bonded to the four eight-foot rods. Thought it was the router, so I bought a very high-end router. Same thing. Even put ferrites on all the cables at the router. Same thing. Makes the XYL very unhappy when she's watching her soaps or doing uh, computer work at night. And I keep shutting down the internet when making contacts from 160 to 20. No issues whatsoever, 18 and uh, up. Using an NFED half wave around 35 feet up, and it's choked there and at the radio much help is appreciated if anyone can 73 ak4 rj so i had this exact same problem when i uh first moved here and uh I, much like you i i called the horrible cable company it was sudden link at the time um same thing the, anytime i keyed up no matter what the power i'm using an nfed uh it's basically same exact setup and same problem and the, the cable company came out or and uh, changed out the router. Still happened. They gave me a better router, blah, blah, blah. Uh, nothing, nothing worked. I'm like, what the heck's going on? They came out. They, they were changing, uh, changing some, some connectors outside and doing all kinds of stuff. Nothing worked. And, of course, they had no idea what was going on. Now, uh, what ended up working for me is one ferrite clamp choke on the power cable of the router not the coax that didn't do anything i i took a, a one of them clamp on ferrite chokes and i just wrapped the power cable around it a bunch of times uh for the router and once i did that never had another problem uh with that issue i mean my wi-fi still sucked but um the radio didn't cut that out now if you've done that the only other thing that i could think of as you mentioned, you have an NFED half wave up about 35 feet, which is exactly the same thing as I do. But you mentioned it's choked at the feed point of the antenna. Uh, I'm curious if you have a counterpoise wire instead uh, that is acting as the other part of the antenna, because you do need some kind of counterpoise with an NFED. Uh, typically, your coax would act as the counterpoise, but you've got a choke right at the feed point, making that not happen so uh, I would wonder if there's just too much uh, kind of stray RF that's just causing some kind of chaos that's getting into your router and and, and preventing uh, or, or disrupting the internet because of the choke at the feed point of the antenna so I try taking that off just plug the coax right into the feed point and uh, the the choke at your radio should be perfect uh, that's kind of where you'd want it anyway with an NFED. So, um, or try taking the choke off and putting a counterpoise if you if you don't have that. Other than that, I'm at a loss. Uh, I've I've like you. I've tried everything. Try just putting a bunch of wraps on the power cord and see what that happens. So, uh, I wish you the best of luck. If if there's any like RF engineers or other people who've experienced this, please put. Uh, your solutions down in the comments so we can share it with the community because I mean there's two of us that have had this problem surely there's more so uh, thanks for writing in I hope we can find a solution for you next we've got a question about special event uh, call sign exchange protocol type stuff this this uh, viewer is writing I recently got my general ticket congratulations 
and have been enjoying my time mainly POTA hunting with my new HF privileges. That's fantastic. Periodically, when I'm scanning the bands, I hear contest CQ calls, which I know have their own protocol to responding to. I have also at times heard special event station CQ calls. Is there any particular protocol for responding to a, a special event station? So, yes, there is. Now, what that protocol is, is going to vary. There's, I mean, there, there's there's as many contests as there are weeks in the year. Uh, so, and they, and they all usually have some kind of uh, special type of way of coming back. They might just be looking for a, like a serial, a sequential serial number. So if they are the first uh, station you've contacted in that uh, contest, you might say, hey, this is K at MRD, you're uh, zero 01 in Texas. Zero 01 meaning you're the first station. And then that would go up sequentially. The next station, I would give them a zero 02, the next station zero 03, and so on and so forth. Other stations are looking for maybe grid squares or like in field day, they're looking for like your, your class and section. Your class meaning uh, like are you indoors? Are you outside on portable power? Are you inside on portable power? Are you just using your home stations? There's all, all kinds of different designators for that. So the and, and I, I wouldn't expect everybody to remember all that. And if, if you can find the contest on the internet, you can look up what the actual exchange is so you can go back to them. The most important thing, though, and, and hopefully you uh, should remember this having just studied for your general, and this, this even happens in technician. The number one important thing we want to do when we're making contact is listen, and then listen some more. And when you think you've listened enough, go ahead and listen some more. That way, you always want to know the station's call sign before you call them. Don't be that guy that's like, oh, oh what was your call sign? Don't be that guy, please. It's just, it's poor etiquette. So by listening, you're one, going to hear kind of just the cadence of kind of the ebb and flow, the call and response, if you will, between the, the operating station and everyone coming back to them. So you'll be able to listen to, you know, is he saying QRZ after every exchange or is he just saying, uh, thanks, man, 73, and then every, you know, everybody, the floodgates open and everybody calls for him. But by listening to both sides, you'll be able to hear the stations calling that guy, giving their responses. And hopefully by doing that, you can kind of figure out what the exchange is. Now, that might not always be the case, and, and maybe the guy's not even doing a, uh, a pileup. Maybe he just started calling CQ. He doesn't have anybody calling at him, uh, something I've done, because these guys are looking for points. Um, and I would say it's pretty excusable to do this because you can't be expected to know every single uh, uh, exchange. You want to give them the, the points, but you don't know the exchange. I've done many times. Hey, I just thrown my call sign out. Hey, I heard you were calling CQ uh, for a contest. I'm not sure what the exchange is, but you're five nine in Texas. And if that's good enough for them, that'll work. Otherwise, they'll they'll kind of tell you what the exchange is. And sometimes that's enough to get other people who might be listening who just haven't thrown out their call sign yet. That might be enough to garner that information for other stations who want to contact this guy, but they don't know what the exchange is. But by all means, please make sure you know uh, what their call sign is before you call them. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. Again, congratulations on your general and thanks for, for hunting, Poda. Hope to, hope to get you on the air sometime soon. Lastly, we have a question about something that I didn't even know existed until today. But hopefully this will uh, help spread some light on this subject. This is from Toby, AD2CD, one of the one of the greatest POTA hunters out there. Thank you, Toby, for being such a great POTA hunter. She writes, I watched your video on Ham Alert. I didn't see how to add or delete parks. I currently have a list of parks in Ham Alert. Unfortunately, uh, I try to edit it and it won't let me save. It says it takes a minute and never updates. Would you have the proper steps to add or delete parks? I would like to have a group list of parks and remove or add other parks as needed. I sent a request via the forum, haven't heard back, 73 Toby. So thanks for writing in, Toby, and thanks for uh, even making this a thing. I just put people's call signs into Ham Alert. 
I had no idea you could put a park, which is really cool. If you're looking for hunting a, spe a specific park or a group of parks that like, you know, maybe they're on like the most wanted parks list or whatever, you can do that in Hamalert. So let's take a look how. So let's go ahead and open up Hamalert. And in the top left, that little hamburger icon, if we click that and then we click on triggers, this is all of the stations that I have in here, just call signs. And it really makes me sad that KG6HQD, God rest your soul, is right there under Josh, but um, I can't bring myself to delete that. So at the very bottom, I've put in some park references. But let's say, let's start from the beginning. So let's say we wanna just put in some parks. Uh, at the very top next to comment, uh, you see conditions, actions, comment. We're gonna hit that plus button. And then under conditions, we get this drop down. And let me embiggen this if I can. And we see park reference. Not park reference list. I'm just going to hit park reference. Now we get park division and park reference. So under park division, I'm in the United States. I want to look for K parks because all the parks in the United States are kilo dash something. But you can see there's a whole bunch of them. So where's the K's? There's K Poda. Okay, so there's the park division. Now the park reference, here's all the parks. So let's just say I'm gonna click on 0120 Ginkgo Petrified Forest. Done, okay? So now that's in there. And I can hit save. And now at the very bottom, we can see park reference Kilo 0120 is in there. If I want to edit that, I can hit either the thing that looks like a little pencil or the thing that looks like the two pieces of paper there. I'll just hit the pencil. And then up at the top, we can uh, edit this if we want, just by clicking in the park reference field. So let's say I'm going to put uh, 0006, Big Ben National Park. Okay. Now that's in there. Hit save. Then we go down to the bottom. We see under park reference, it has two parks. Okay. Now, uh, let's just hit the pages thing, because I think it does look a little bit different. Yeah. So now when we hit that pages thing, we can see we have kilo 0006, comma, space, kilo 0120. And it says, type or paste a list of park references separated with commas, spaces, or line breaks here. So let's put a comma and a space, and I'm going to put kilo-3019, that's Huntsville State Park, and I'm going to hit save. Now, at the bottom we have three parks under park references. Now let's hit that uh, three, uh, that little two pieces of paper thing again. Let's say I wanna edit this. Let's say I worked kilo uh, 0120. Let's get rid of that. Make sure we get rid of the comma as well. So I just have 0006 and 3019 in here. Okay, now I can hit save again. And notice down under uh, park references, it says two parks. So let's go up to the one uh, and it's it, it keeps adding these as new uh, now I've got four park reference things here so we can just delete uh, the the second from the bottom by hitting the, the trash can it says are you sure you want to delete the trigger I'm gonna hit delete now it's gone uh, I will do the same for that two parks second from the bottom delete that's gone let's go back up to this uh, six parks thing but let's hit the pencil this time and see what happens I thought I hit the pencil. Hit the pencil. There we are. Okay. All right. So hitting the pencil does the exact same thing. And again, if we want to get rid of all of these, maybe I just want to have these three. Hit save. That edited. So apparently hitting the pencil will just edit the park. So let's hit the, the last one. Hitting the pencil will edit the parks. Looks like hitting the, uh, maybe the pages is, is make a copy. I think that's what it is. So let's go to this bottom one. Let's hit the pencil again. And let's say I want to add uh, kilo-4417. I think that's one of the parks that I activate. And if we hit save, see that just added that park to that list. It didn't make another list. So if you want to edit the list, hit the pencil. If you want to copy it and maybe tweak it a little bit and have two different lists, then hit the, uh, the little pages button. Uh, again, if you want to edit it, so let's hit the pencil. 
Uh, let's see. Is there a way to delete it? There is a trash can uh, right next to the box where we would edit it. Okay. So if we just hit this trash can, uh, it is gone if we hit save. Nope. It says, please correct the following errors. Okay. So did that delete it though? No, it sure didn't. So apparently we might not be able to delete it. Okay. That just deletes, um, that just deletes the fields that doesn't delete the actual, uh, referent that the thing that we just made. So we just hit the trash can next to it, hit delete, done and done. And then when you're done, you hit done at the very bottom left corner. And that's it. And we can go back to our triggers. And there's the three parks that we saved. So that is how you do that. Toby, thanks for writing in. Thanks for being such an awesome hunter. Thanks for teaching me something that I didn't know existed in the Ham Alert app. That app is the greatest freaking app in ham radio as far as I'm concerned. Guys, if you have questions for me, shoot me an email. KMRD at iCloud.com. And you just may have a question featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at KMRD. And we will see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.